Welcome to the channel everyone and today we are going to talk about the best business expansion strategy for private security agencies and that is nothing but client retention. A business strategy should be such which takes minimum of your time, minimum of your effort, minimum of your investment and gets you the maximum of result. Client retention for business expansion is one such strong, effective, critical strategy for you to know. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Imagine that you have a bucket that you have to carry to a river to fill it with water and get back to your home. Now imagine that the bucket has holes. It's a leaky bucket. And every time you go to the river, you fill up the bucket with water till the time you get back to your source destination. You see that the bucket is already half empty because there are leaks in the bucket. This is exactly why focusing on client retention is important because no matter how many new clients you keep on acquiring, if your existing clients are getting churned out, are leaving you, then your glass, your bucket will always be half empty. So you have to plug those leaks before you go out and start acquiring new business. So focusing on client retention makes financial sense. And I'll give you just three facts that will prove this point to you. One is that it is far more cheaper to retain an existing client than acquire a new one. In most cases, it is 5 to 20 times cheaper to do so. Right? And since it is far more cheaper to retain an existing client, the retained client is far more profitable than a new client. The second thing is that the majority of the business in private security industry in India especially is through referrals. So regardless of how good or bad your website is, how much you are spending on social media ads, etc. Till the time you don't have a strong referral, it is very hard to win new business in the industry. But when will a good client open up their network for you? Only and only when they trust you fully and are 100% satisfied with your services. And also, there is a short nuance here. The nuance is that you can assume that a good quality client of yours will have more good quality clients in their network. So it becomes that much more important for you to unlock that network for yourself to acquire more and more good quality clients. And the third fact here is that a 100% satisfied client, a fully trusting client, a client who is easily retained is not only source of additional revenue by way of referrals, but is also a source of additional revenue through upsell and cross-sell opportunities. For example, if you have been able to establish a very strong trust factor with your client, then eventually you might also be able to increase your prices. Right, Because now the client fully trusts you and sees you as a genuine value adding partner rather than just a cost item like majority of the other PSAs that are there in the market. So this becomes your competitive advantage. So this proves why focusing on client retention makes financial sense. And I'll also show this to you in an Excel model that I've prepared for you. Right, But before we get into that, I want to talk about how do you measure client retention. Right, So for this discussion, we'll be focusing on four key metrics. First one being retention rate. Now, how do you calculate retention rate? It is E minus N by S into 100. E is the clients that you have at the ending of the period. N is the new clients that you acquired during that period. And S is the starting number of clients that you had at the starting of that period. And that multiplied by 100 will give you a percentage. So an industry average for the private security industry in India is 85% plus. So if your retention rate is something below 85%, then it should ring alarm bells for you. It's a big red flag and you should immediately drop everything else and start focusing on improving this metric. The second is churn rate. Churn rate is like the other side of the equation for retention rate, right? So it is simply one minus retention rate. So if your retention rate is 85% plus, you will expect that your churn rate should be less than 15%, right? So again, if your churn rate is higher than 15% today, drop everything else and focus on improving this metric. The third is CSAT, also known as Client Satisfaction Score. It is simply the number of satisfied clients divided by total number of respondents into 100. The industry average for this score is 75 to 85%. But the catch here is that how do you determine whether a client is satisfied or not? And that is where collecting feedback, getting client expectations right, getting client satisfaction right becomes more of an art than it is a science. So you have to be very careful in determining whether a client is really satisfied with you or not. And the fourth one is NPS, which is also known as Net Promoter Score. Very important because this tells you 
how likely is an existing client of yours to recommend your services in their own networks and this is what you must be focusing on pretty simply percent promoters minus percent detractors and a <clears throat> and an acceptable score is 30 to 50 right so if you have not been tracking your nps then now is the time to start doing so because this is what will tell you whether a client really will recommend you to their network or not and if they don't want to recommend you to their network then something is seriously wrong and you must address that so i believe in a why what why how approach so why is you should first know why you are measuring what is it that you are measuring the what is what is the level of whatever you have measured so for example what is your retention rate what is your csat what is your nps then the second why means why is it what it is so let's say if your nps is 20 then why is it 20 if your churn rate is let's say 25 percent then why is it 25 percent and how means how can you improve it so if your churn rate is 25 percent how can you bring it below 15 percent below 10 percent if your nps is 20 then how can you increase it to let's say between 30 to 50 range or even above 50 right so this is the approach that you have to follow and this will give you critical answers now before we move on I'll show you the Excel model that I've prepared and that will re-emphasize on the point that client retention really makes financial sense. So now you see the Excel model on the screen. Here what I've done is I've prepared this model based on a hypothetical private security agency who's there operating in the market and this model is structured to show you how the numbers move from month 1 to month 12. So this is a one year forecast for this particular private security agency that we are talking about, right? So for this example, we are assuming that this private security agency acquires 10 new clients each month, right? Here it is. The client retention rate for this PSA is 60% and by virtue of that, the churn rate becomes 40%. If you remember, churn rate is just 1 minus retention rate, right? We are assuming that the average revenue that this particular PSA makes from a client is 1 lakh rupees per month. The average profitability per client is 7%. Customer acquisition cost, which is simply the money that you have to spend on a potential client be before they actually convert into a real client for you, right? You will have to do multiple visits. You will have to send multiple brochures. You might have to do some demos, some presentations for them, right? All these things come at a cost and not just a financial cost, but also a cost of your time. So if let's say if you are a CEO of a PSA and you are spending like 10 hours on acquiring a new client, those 10 hours are really, really costly for you, right? So that is why the CAC as a percentage of revenue is 10%. Since we have already seen that retaining an existing client is 5 to 20 times cheaper, I'm still taking the lower end of it. So we are assuming that retaining a client is 5 times cheaper than acquiring a client, which is why you see retention cost as a percentage of revenue is only 2%, which is 5 times cheaper than the 10% cost of acquisition, right? Since it is the first month, there are no clients at the beginning of the period, which is why you see a zero here. Then during the period, as we have already discussed, the PSA is going to acquire 10 new clients. So you see 10 here and clients churned because there were no existing clients is still zero. So you can expect that at the end of month one, the clients would be 10 in number, right? So clients at the end of the period are 10 here. Based on this, the revenue becomes 10 into 1 lakh, which is 10 lakh. Operating profit becomes 70,000, which is 7%, which is usually the service charge that a PSA can command in the market. CAP becomes 1 lakh. Retention cost is 0. And net profit is minus 30,000. So you are essentially operating with a loss. Right? Now I am removing this box here so that I can make visible for you the remaining 11 months. And we will see what happens when the focus is not really on client retention. So again, to re-emphasize the client retention rate here is only 60%, whereas the industry average or an acceptable metric in the industry or an acceptable level in the industry is 85% plus, right? So here we see then in month two, what happens is everything remains same. You just focus here how the client base changes. We see that the clients at the beginning of the period were 10. 10 new clients were acquired during that month. And 4 got churned out, right? Because our churn rate is 40%. So 4 out of 10 got churned out. So that means that at the end of the period, you have 16 clients. Even though you acquired 10 more clients, you are not sitting at 20 total clients at the end of the period. You only have 16 because 4 got churned out. 
because you are not focusing on client retention, right? So now that we have seen this in month two, we now move to month three. In month three, we observe that the client base increases to 19. In month four, it increases to 21. Month five, it hits 22. In month six, it becomes 23. And then you see from month six onwards, it gets stagnated to 23 only. Even though the PSA is acquiring 10 new clients per month, <coughs> the end client base in that particular period is not growing. It has stagnated. And that is because you are working with the leaky bucket. Whatever clients that you are acquiring, whatever base that you have, there is a certain percentage of that base which is not renewing that contract with you. So even though you are spending so much effort, time, money, energy, everything on acquiring new clients, your client base as a whole is stagnated. What does this mean? This means that your revenue is also stagnated now. You see, you are only making 23 lakhs even though you are acquiring new clients. And by virtue of that, your profitability also is stagnated, which anyway is very low. So that is what I've been saying that why client retention makes financial sense is because if you don't focus on client retention, then you can keep on acquiring new clients, but you will eventually stagnate as a business. You will eventually stagnate as a company. Now, let's say if this company does well in managing their client retention and brings it to the acceptable number in the industry, which is 85%, right? It does wonders for them, right? You see, not only the top line, which is the revenue expands, it expands at a growing rate, right? You see, we saw 23 lakhs in the last example. But here, since the client retention is much better, you see, they have already touched 23 lakh plus in month three itself. And they are growing throughout the first 12 months. And their profitability also is increasing across these 12 months. So now I hope you realize why focusing on client retention is extremely, extremely important for you. By the way, another thing to note here is that you will have to spend on client retention as well. We are already spending 2% of the revenue on retaining that client. So it is not coming free of cost to you. But since it is five times cheaper than acquiring a new one, it is much more profitable. And that is the point of it. So now I hope that you are really convinced why client retention is extremely, extremely important and how client retention helps you expand your business, which is the point of this video, right? You see the business is expanding many fold. And that is happening only because you worked on your client retention and nothing else. You are still acquiring 10 new clients per month. Nothing has changed there. But your retention rate is much better, which is why your business has expanded. It's on a rocket ship now. So coming back to our presentation, what can you do to retain clients? What is the strategy that you must follow to retain clients? I've spoken at length about client retention strategies in another video, the link of which will be shared in the description. You can go and watch that. It's an hour long talk and I get into the details of what needs to be done. However, thematically, what you must focus on is that any client retention strategy should have only one objective and that objective must to develop robust, unbreakable trust with your client, right? Now, how do you do that? There are three core attributes that every action of yours has to, has to demonstrate. The first attribute is proactivity. The second is authenticity. And the third is predictability. So I'm giving you some example. You can be proactive in collecting feedback from the client, in addressing the identified issues, and in also learning the evolving industry trends. It should not be the client who is telling you that, hey, PSA, there is this new technology in the market. Why are you not giving me this? You should be in control of the narrative because you are the security partner. You are the security expert. So you should be guiding your client as to what technology can they incorporate in their security architecture, not the other way around. Then authenticity, it must be demonstrated in how you listen to the complaints of your clients. A lot of PSAs do not really focus on client complaints. They are like, huh? It's all right. I mean, we have such a large client base. Some problems are bound to happen. I agree. But then how you listen to those problems and how you address them is where you have to demonstrate utmost authenticity. Then, of course, in how you resolve these problems and you have to be obsessed with your client and their needs. Only then will you be able to win in the market. That also should reflect the authenticity that we have been talking about. And predictability can be demonstrated in how you are collecting feedback, the end client must know 
that okay this is when a feedback has been taken from me and then this is the next time when the feedback will be taken from me again this is the format of the feedback these are the questions that i will be asked these are the contests that i will be asked my opinions on so this is how you give predictability to your client then of course once you have identified issues you must communicate a timeline to your client that this is the kind of time that you need to resolve that particular issue the client should not be left you know discerning for themselves as to when this particular issue will be resolved and of course you must give the client a predictability of the scope of your services that this is what you can do and this is what you cannot do otherwise the client will expect the world from you and you will not be able to deliver so that is how you give predictability so again summarizing three core attributes that will help you develop that big trust factor with your client and eventually become a client retention magnet is proactivity authenticity and predictability now if you have demonstrated these three attributes in collecting all your inputs and all your inputs are smart are intelligent right let's say for example you are collecting inputs by way of feedback and if you are collecting smart inputs by asking intelligent questions <clears throat> right if you have intelligent processes in place then you can expect that you will be able to deliver a smart output and why i say a smart surgical strike because you will be able to pinpoint as to what the client really wants you to do and you will be able to deliver on that particular thing and that will create a client delight experience like no other trust me on that right and once you have done that once you have given that client so much delight you will become a trusted partner for that client and that eventually will lead you to becoming a client retention magnet you will essentially become irreplaceable for your client and once that happens that will unlock massive growth for you like no other and that becomes your biggest competitive advantage and as i've already mentioned in the starting of the video this particular strategy of using client retention for business expansion is very very underrated is very very cost effective and will deliver results very very quickly for you so try it and let me know how it goes so that was all for today we are 360 psa we partner with only handful selected psas who have that hunger in that belly to become industry leaders to become industry dominators and we help them achieve their goals so make your psa simply the best is what we operate with and if you wish to get in touch you can see the details on the screen we'll see you in the next video